First of all, we'll start uh, here with Rich Pedroli, who is our challenger, because the folks have had a chance to meet Peter. Uh, when, uh, thank, uh, I'm, I'm also very grateful to uh, Brian Leary for filling in for me for the last three weeks. And uh, while, during that time, Peter came on and won his championship from Tom Olsta. You, I haven't seen you since you came on here like a house of fire the first time began throwing strikes and uh, we were giving away trips to Singapore and everything else at that time. What have you been doing since then? A lot of working. Graduated yeah. from college from Northeastern mm -hmm. and working as a sports writer in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. How'd you ever get in that profession? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How's your bowling? Uh, not bad. You're okay. a tough guy to bowl against. Oh, you know? I know it. One of the best left-handers around. Peter, your, your uh, uh, two sons, are they uh, being taught this game that, that you have been so successful at? Yeah, they're teaching themselves that. I kind of, you know, can't stop them. Once you come down here, they want to go bowl and bowl. Well, good. Okay, I hope both of you have the best day of your lives here, and we have a great match. All right? And we'll be underway with the first match. Oh, there. So had a high single of 185, then a high triple of 470. And when he was on our show... His previous appearance, as he came on as a successful challenger and became a champion, he was one of the few to put together three strikes in a row. A nine. The additional prize money, which I alluded to at the start of the show, for those of you who are unfamiliar, for three marks in a row, that's any combination of strikes or spears in the same string, we give a bonus of $50. And then each subsequent consecutive mark in that same string, just as long as the bowler can keep it going, will be worth $50 apiece. If a bowler gets three strikes in a row, there is an additional bonus of $1,000. There's the first mark. And for each subsequent consecutive strike following those three, $1,000 apiece. For a bowler who rolls over 400 for his triple, there is a, a bonus of $100. The winner of each string gets $50, and should they tie, obviously they would split it to $25 apiece. Peter Flynn, our defending champion, league average 127. High single for Peter is in the rare for Candlepin bowlers, 200 range, 204. High triple, 480. Extremely impressive numbers, and he's been impressive for several years. One of the best. He works for A.W. Chesterton Company, and uh, he's the father of two little boys. There's a spare representing Colonial Lanes of South Weymouth and the Granada Lane in Malta. Now, Rich Pedroli coming up. Rich is single. He is a sports writer, as he mentioned, and uh, some of you in the Providence area may have read his stuff because he writes for the Woonsocket Call. He represents the Lafayette Lanes. Two full on the head pin. He winds up with five for a fill. 627 is what he had in the roll-off. Peter Flynn had 688. That's a five-string roll-off to qualify to get on the show. It's a seven box. two pins to try to pick up. Those pins are so easy to punch out when you don't want to. If you have a, all ten up and you are uh, attempting to get a big fill or a big hit, sometimes it's so easy to punch out the two and the eight. They are back to back, which makes it tough. Well, he tried to use a piece of wood which was just to the right side, hoping that he could divert the ball from the wood and get both. It turns out to be an eight box. Now Peter Flynn comes up, recall now that he has a spare in the second, so he will have a bonus fill right now. Uh, 
a thin hit. And he gets just five for his fill. His object pin is still the number one. He has a one two. But missed the one again. Seven box. So each bowler had a five for a fill on a spare in the second and each had a seven in the box. For a moment it appeared that we might have a strike coming up from Peter Flynn. It does look like an excellent opportunity for a spare with nothing but the four and the seven to pick up. And yes he has it. All right, it's, we've had four. This is our spot where we uh, take a little break and get you up to date on the scoreboard. And uh, the score at the end of four in the first string is challenger Rich Pedroli of Milford, Massachusetts, 39, defending champion Peter Flynn of Lawrence, 42 with a bullet. In the fifth box of the first string is our challenger Rich Pedroli of Milford, Massachusetts. Pretty good, pinfall. Only two pins standing, the five and the nine. that time. Time call by our referee and lob line judge Ralph Stewart. He's taking a check on a piece of that wood to make sure it was behind the lob line. And the lob line is two feet, 24 inches in front of the very center of the number one pin. Anything touching it or this side of it has to be removed. If it's completely behind it, then it must stay there. Sometimes acting as uh, a help and other times as a roadblock. Finally, the pin drops. It's a 10. Just missed the head pin. He leaves the four horsemen on the right side. One, three, six, ten. And the left-hander punches out the number one. I shouldn't just say the left-hander. They're both left-handers here today. The, uh, if I refer to him other than Rich, I should call him the challenger to distinguish. All right, here is our defending champion, Peter Flynn. And remember, he had a spare in the fourth, so this is a bonus ball. And he picks up six additional pins. That's the fill on that spare. Object pin becomes a three. Made it. Three, five, six, and ten. So two marks in a row. And remember, three marks in a row, an additional bonus of $50. He has it with the strike. That gives him three marks in a row. At the conclusion of our show, we will have our Hilo jackpot 1710. That's worth 400. Rich Pedrelli has himself a strike. So our bowlers are heating up a little bit. As Peter Flynn has put together two spares and a strike, <coughs> now Rich Pedroli with a strike. Two full on the head pin, and uh, it's a thin hit. Just three pins out of there. Nearest pin to him is becoming the object is the number two. And he made the spare. With the two, four, five, the seven and eight, and over on the right, the six and ten. Quite. All right, Peter Flynn now has a strike up there. 
bring that to the... Three marks in a row. Already has $50 in bonus money. <coughs> Trying for 50 more. Seven pins down. Now let's see if he can get the other. <coughs> Five is still there. So it's a nine for a fill. And the consecutive marks stop at three. Nine in the box also. program, as uh, <clears throat> most of you know, is on videotape, and we do our taping right here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, sometimes several weeks before you actually see the telecast. Rich Pedroli with a pair of marks consecutively, a strike, and then a sensational spare. Bonus gets him six and leaves the one, two, seven, and ten, and two pieces of wood in the bag. He'll look this one over, try to kick that number one probably over to get the 10 and have uh, the two go back. Nope, he went to the right of it and didn't get anything except a piece of wood. Went for that pocket, but the 10 is still there, so it's a nine box. As I mentioned, the uh, high-low High low jackpot. That's the 1710, which you set up at the end. It's worth $400. Winner gets first try at it. If he doesn't hit it, the runner up goes after it. And uh, if neither hits it, we add $25 and keep doing that till someone walks away with whatever has accumulated in that jackpot. He's waiting for a piece of wood to settle down, since they must. Oh, yes, what a pretty 10. He winds up with a 113, and it would appear that Peter Flynn will be winning $50. Nine drop, just the seven pin with wood to pick up for a spare. He again is waiting for a piece of wood to settle down. Has it. Okay, that already gives him 116, so we'll give him an extra $50 right now because he has won the first string. The fill is seven. Six and ten over on the right, four over on the left. No. And again, Ralph Stewart calls time to get a loose ball. Peter at 123 and already has eight in this box. So he's at 131. Two more pins down there. He'd like to get at least one more. Once again, waiting for the wood to stop rolling back and forth. 
Got one, tried for the other, and is he going to get it? It's going to hit it, but not hard enough. So it's a nine for a 132. Fine string for our defending champion, Peter Flynn of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Looking very intent at the moment. The score at the end of one. Defending champion Peter Flynn, 132. Challenger Rich Pedroli, one champion, leads it off. Peter Flynn is his name, and he leads the match. He has the four horsemen right side to work on, which is sometimes easier for a left-hander that is going cross lane. Everything but the 10. Piece of wood went down but didn't quite get it. Nine. Rich Pedroli, today's challenger from Milford, Massachusetts. Very capable of uh, rolling strikes, as we well know from his last appearance on our show. Nice hit. Oh, yeah, that was one seven ten that he just made for his bear. Very pretty. When Rich came on our show for the first time, he defeated John Miller for 415. Six, that's the fill. Two pin is the object, then he has the five, and in the back, the seven and eight. So he has begun the second string with a pair of spares. And Peter Flynn has two strikes in a row. I've already told you what three strikes in a row is worth. So all we'll do now is just sit back here and watch Peter Flynn. No, he did not get three strikes in a row, and that would have been worth an extra bonus of $1,000. He has diamond left to work on. Two, four, five, eight. Nope, he got half of it, and the diamond wins again. One of the toughest of all spare leaves. A nine box. Rich Pedroli coming up with a chance for some bonus money with two marks in a row. a break. It's an eight drop. Two and four. Those are the pins that are standing. Taking his time. It's worth $50. And yes, he makes it. Give him $50 in bonus money. Hit and Rich Pedroli has four marks in a row, $100 in bonus money, and it's still alive. When we come back again, we'll see how far. And Peter Flynn, he had a big lead, 132, 113 after one, but Rich Pedroli has gotten hot, his challenger here in the second, so he has to go to work. And almost a backdoor strike, one pin remaining, the four pin. A little collection of wood around it. But it should go, and it did. It's a spare in the fifth. And 
and he comes up with a strike on top of that. So we have two excellent strings working now in the middle. Rich Pedroli with four marks in a row. And remember, he's working on a strike right now, so he has two bonus balls to roll. Here's the first. Two full on the head pin. Almost a spread eagle. He'll have to work to make this one. Three pins on the right, two on the left. Two and four on the left, three, six, ten on the right. Goes for the right side and went too far, and uh, you can tell by the disgusted look on his face. So he has to settle for six as the fill, but more important to him, that string of consecutive marks came to a halt. Nine is the box. So he had mounted a challenge to Peter Flynn, but now Peter, of course, with two marks opposite here. Has regained the lead in this string after having a substantial lead following the first. Three, five, and nine are the pins. That's a tough spare leave. He did not get it, he got just the three. Ten box. Now Peter Flynn comes up with another opportunity for bonus money. First bonus ball gets him spread eagle, uh, rather uh, gets him a half push to right, and uh, punt he also loses one more over on the left-hand side. All but one. He got nine. He does not have any bonus. Again, just waiting for a pin to stop. And he makes it a 10 box. Once again, he punches out on the right side, a half Worcester. It's a seven box. He's not too happy with that. That brings up Rich Pedroli. Janie Cartier is keeping score on that big scoreboard today, and Keith Williams is keeping score beside me. I've already indicated that our lob line judge and referee is Ralph Stewart. There he is. Our secretary is Joanne Panto. Our statistician is Don Riley. And our producer director is Phil Rubin. An eight box for Rich Pedroli. has the four and the seven and wood in very favorable position. Made it. Spare in the eighth. Peter Flynn on his way to winning another string and another fifty dollars. Already at 118 with two to go. Two, four, seven, and eight. That's what he has left to look at. So 
That eight pin was hit by a spinning ball, but it would not go down. Nine. 127. Ten pins still there. A piece of wood comes loose. Ralph Stewart calls time. He'll go get it. Single pin over in the corner to pick up for another spare for Peter Flynn. Yes, he has it. 137 plus what he gets on the next ball. He had a 132 opener. So he has a very decent shot at 400 and an extra bonus of $100. Six more. 143. Now Rich Pedroli comes up. He has a spare up there in the eighth. Here's the bonus ball. How many more are going to fall? He got all the left side just by one falling into the other. Now just two pins remaining, the six and the ten. And yes! So he has two in a row. At 125. Five more. One thirty. Just one pin. So Peter Flynn will pick up another fifty dollars. He will be the winner of the middle string. And Rich Pedroli winds up with a one thirty nine. look at the scoreboard there's the total in the middle string and the total after two has defending champion Peter Flynn of Lawrence leading Rich Pedroli our challenger from Milford 275 to big hit but he winds up with a seven and ten. He's just pointed, stay where you are, Wood. You see what he has. He has seven and ten, but he has two pieces of wood on an angle near the seven, and he wants to move them across to get the ten. He did it. Pretty shot. The fill is a very thin one. Just four. And the object pin becomes number three. He's got three, five, six, and then across the back, he's got seven, eight, and nine. Everything but the seven. Okay, it's a 10. And Peter Flynn comes up. Peter leading in the match by 23 pins. Three, five, nine, and 10 with two pieces of wood behind the three. Missed the three and he can't believe it. I want to give a word of thanks to Kenneth Walsh of Moody Street in Waltham. As you well know, uh, I attempt to describe for many, many of the blind people who tune in for our show or those who are, have uh, 
limited sight. I try to describe what the bowler is shooting for at the time. And he has set us in an interesting little thing which he thought it would be easy to be, to uh, for a person to make and that maybe blind people might enjoy it. And that is uh, basically it's a small little uh, rectangle of uh, cardboard and on it in the shape of the, the way the pins are set up with the one then the two and three side by side and then obviously the four five six and then across the back the seven eight nine and ten just using Elmer's glue all and making a little drop and then putting a tiny perforation with a pencil in the center of it he basically has given us a braille uh, setup of the 10 pins and he thought perhaps if uh, people wanted to do that those that were of limited sight they could run their fingers across it and at least have a feeling of where the pins are so thanks very much Ken for your suggestion and also for your kind words Rich Pedroli on the line now His second mark in the first three boxes of the third string. Another bonus. And it's five. This is a tough shot. As those of you who have been watching for a long time are acutely aware, it's the four horsemen on the left side, and it's the nine pin. Were it the ten, it would be easier. It's never easy per se to make the four horsemen with an extra pin but it seems to be easier for a bowler to make if he has a little more angle on it that is if it's the four horsemen right the seven pin four horsemen left the ten rather than the eight or nine which are more difficult nine box all right Peter Flynn looking for his first mark in the third string all but one. He has that two pin with a little piece of wood against it, and that's but he needs for a spare. He's taking his time, doesn't want to waste it. Our challenger next week will be another veteran candle pin bowler, Richard Hawk Hallis of Chelsea. Another one with an excellent league average of 123. Seven, that's the fill. His object pin becomes the three. He has three, nine, and they have the seven. The seven is untouched. It's a ten box. Now Rich Pedroli, trailing by 23 pins as he came into this third string. But a very explosive bowler, capable any time of putting together four or five marks. We saw him put together four in a row in the second string. A big strike there, and he has twice on our show rolled over 400. There's the first bonus ball. He still has left a one, three, then two pieces of wood, and then the 10. Another piece of wood over on the left, which uh, will not be a part of it unless it well it's rolling now we have to wait and see what will happen to it for a spare no Obviously not happy. It's a 10. Now Peter Flynn coming up.
Big hit for our defending champion. Everything but the kingpin. Now he has a piece of wood that is in a position that he does not like. It, uh, it's right in front of that five pin. Can he get it? Yes. Boy, that was tight. I'll tell you, he had to get by that piece of wood because had he touched that piece of wood, it would have gone one way, the ball would have gone another, and the five would still be standing. He just had to edge it by. Had to have great control to do it. How many? Six. Five and six, nine and ten. Those are the pins. Wood in front of the five. Made it! Now, Rich Pedroli. Rich, very unhappy when he was unable to convert that last spare. Let's see if he can do something about it right now. If he does, it's going to be some shot because he has over on the left four, seven, eight, and the 10 alone over on the right. One piece of wood, but it doesn't appear to be deep enough to have too much help in getting that 10. Whatever, it has decided that it's gonna tease a little bit by rolling back and forth. All right, now let's see what Rich can do. Nope, got just the eight. It's an eight box. Some vocal support for Rich in the background. One more. Everything except the head pin, number one. can't believe it he missed the number one it was alone up there except for some wood and he missed it now he hit it right in the middle Peter Flynn has two marks in a row and a chance to pick up more bonus money also inches way toward the 400 just two, that's the fill as he punches out the half Worcester right. Punching out the three pin and the eight pin, or rather nine pin. No bonus money, he's unable to convert here. Eight. not get the hit that he wanted or expected. Three, six, nine over on the right, and two pins on the left, he gets them all. Very nice shot, and well-deserved applause. That puts him at 92 with a bonus ball to roll. Here's Rich Pedroli for his final two, and he'd like to go out with a big bang if he could. He'll be working on the one, six, eight, and 10. Made it. Pretty shot. Has a spare in the ninth. And gets himself a strike. One twenty-five already. Two bonus balls to roll. All right, he has seven of them so far. 
Over on the left, the eight pin. On the right, the six and ten and two pieces of wood. He's at 132. One more pin to drop and it would have been worth $50 in bonus money. It wouldn't go. So it's a 134. That could be good enough to win the string, but it appears there's no question that Peter Flynn is going to win the match. Peter has a spare. Peter has an eight drop on his spare and a chance for another. That puts him at 100. And yes, he has another. That puts him at 110 and counting. Bonus ball coming up. Two more pins wins the match. He's won the match. Now we'll just see what the final score will be. He gets six on that. And let's see what he can do with what he has left over here, which is uh, two, four, seven, and eight. And yes, he made it. Three marks in a row, and he picks up another $50 in bonus money. Sorry, I just knocked my microphone down in my excitement. He gets uh, how many more? Six more. So 407. Peter rolls a 407. He did not win the third string uh, with his 132. Rich Pedroli did, so Rich picks up another 